All right. I'll just tell you what it is here, and later on we'll have time to take a look at the grass few minutes to walk around and see the different grasses. Um, before that, I would like to tell you how we're going to release and have the material delivered to producers. Uh, the Florida Cattlemen's Association, the research committee, they were in charge to develop the approach that we were doing to spread the material around the state. As you know, this is the first release, so we have very limited amount of material. We wouldn't have for everybody. So the Florida Cattlemen's Association decided that we would select few producers that will take material this year and they are taking the plant material to their place and multiplying the plant material for next year. So next year those producers will be in charge of selling plant material to the producers around their place. So we have few producers in Okeechobee, we have, we have some Manatee County and we have a producer up north, in North Florida too actually. So we're going to have the material spread around the state and, and next year we also will have some plant material available for, for other producers. So that will be the approach that we, we decide to take and the, the cattlemen was proposing that we, we thought that was a good plan. You know, it's a fast way to multiply, the material will be spread around the state so it will be easier for the grass to be available to, to a different kind of clientele in different areas. Um, what we have here, if you look at the field, this side here, it's what we call um, uh, gib grass, and it's what we call the old number 10, and this is the gib grass right here, in this side. We plant this field here um, last year, uh, by August to last year, so we just managed last year, and this year we clean it up in the spring and just let it grow, and this is the plant material that we have, that now, we are, uh, the producers are coming to pick it up. So we just have one load that left it today to, to the Seminoles and, and they will plant some over there and it will be, it'll be available later for, for the producers around that, that region. And on the other side of the trailers, we park it here for that reason, that is can high, or that is the 4F. So you can see on this side is the number 10, give grass, the other side is 4F and, and can hide. So uh, if you have any questions about it, you will be available to answer those questions and you can take a look and, and probably in about 10 minutes, we will just hop on and, and we'll go back to the building and have lunch. How much was it the same time? It was, it was planted about two weeks apart. How much fertilizer did you put on it? Um, well, in this field here, we did two shots of 60 pounds to the acre. We did one in the spring and we came back and did another one. And it's thick. We are getting a lot of round bales out of here. What type of vein did you use? Uh, we, we Actually, we did. A, I, I told you two shots of nitrogen. The first time it was a complete formula. It was like a, a 20-5-10, and the second time it was ammonium nitrate. Did you do any herbiciding shortly after you planted? Yes, we did. We did. Let me see. I probably not have on the top of my head, but we did. We herbicide about two weeks after we planted. We planted this field last year. If you remember last year, it was pretty wet. So by the time that we finished planting, this whole thing was underwater. And I thought it was pretty bad to the plant material. I was concerned because that's what we had. And it got underwater and we need to still to plant that one. But it's amazing how it came well and, you know, it didn't dry out for a month, but it, it did really well. So that's, How many rolls to the acre of this did you spray? Um, we, we planted uh, square bales. So the squares that we have were about 50 pounds. We did about 20, 25 squares to the acre. We planted by hand. So I was just telling Patricia over there, for sure, as you know, if you use a, a hay buster to plant hay, you need to increase that. Uh, on, on the on the green material, without the hay buster, it would be about 1,200 pounds of green forage. 
But if you use the hay buster, you need to double that, at least to double, because that really hurts the plant material. And we have experience here. If the hay buster, we learned by experience. So you shook it out by hand? Here, all by hand. Would you, would you, did you, did you have a, 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 a more material to get a quick stand and a real thick stand, or was that what you would suggest? Yeah. That, 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 no, uh, that's the standard that we use. Actually, here, we try to stretch a little bit. We knew that we we're going to manage well, but I think that 20 bales, 20 something bales of 50 pounds, it's a good ratio. It's a good one. Does that make sense, Jim? <laughs> for, for one year, one year's growth from right now, that's a heck of a stand out.